Hey guys, it's Adam Rose, Vice President and Senior Loan Officer of Western Ohio Mortgage here in Sydney, Ohio. This is another episode of the Mortgage Guy podcast, and this is the one where you get to know Kevin Frazier Jones of Gay Smith and Associates. How you doing, everybody? So, uh, too bad we're not live, right? And people can't just heart it the whole time. Oh man, that'd be cool. We should yeah. do a call in. <laughs> we could. I, that's yeah. uh, that's outside my technical expertise. You just um, tell him to call the phone and you answer the phone. Yeah, yeah, that's so it, we could, we could put him on speaker, easy. maybe. Uh, Justin, who's out in San Diego that uh, does all the editing, he could probably figure it out. Yeah, that's but, that uh, guy that used to work here. Yeah. Right? Well, he still does. Yeah. He's still here, but uh, he's on a different time zone. I don't know how much work he's actually doing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had that. I questioned that when he was here. Yeah. So, <laughs> actually, that's what Kylie always did. What the hell are you doing back there, anyways? <laughs> we always kept it busy. So, first thing off, I've been asking a lot of people, Kevin, do you have an irrational fear? Yes. Oh, okay. Let's hear it. What of, we got of being recorded? Oh yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. No, really. Okay. My, I, I think my biggest fear in life, and I'm not sure it's irrational or not. Yeah. It's just making mistakes. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I a really fear of have, disappointing someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it happens. I have that. And when it happens, you beat yourself up. And yeah. Then, and then it's like it compounds the whole issue. Well, that's why uh, that's why we're so stressed out in this business all the time because there's so much going on, right? Yeah. On the lending side, there's so many things that can go wrong. On the real estate side, you know, did you miss something at a property? You right. misadvised. Well, and it stresses you out. And you got to be careful on on, on advising. You, there's some yeah. things you can't say uh, from a legal standpoint. So yeah. you have to really be cautious on what you say to people because you don't want to mislead them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, forget mm -hmm. the fact that it may be legal, but you don't want to mislead somebody and have them buy a property that you think is going to be okay when it really isn't okay. Yeah. And, and, and the reason we're so stressed out about this and the public image and your reputation, uh, reputation is all you got in this business. Yeah. And when you are in a small town, if something goes wrong, it gets around pretty quick. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Yeah. So I am 100% on board yeah. with you. That is not irrational. Yeah. Um, so, so Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, where are you from? Or how long have you been here? Married, kids? What's going on? Oh, well, yeah. I, so I've, I've been in Sydney, Ohio now almost 40 years. I'm what, from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Actually, um, I didn't know that. I knew you've oh, been you here forever, but yeah. I didn't know where you were originally from. Yeah, I went to Snyder High School in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yeah. Graduated well, back in 19 years something. <laughs> And then, you don't want to say? Uh, okay. I tell everybody I'm like 69 anyway, <laughs> you, so it don't matter. Did you, ha did you stop having birthdays like me? <laughs> no, actually, I don't care. I really don't care how old people think I am. Right. I mean, the older they think I am, the better I look. Right, yeah. yeah. So it, get, it got to that point where I just tell people I'm 69. Yeah. And like, wow, you, look you look amazing. Really for 69, dude. <laughs> you know, but, uh, What's Medicare like? <laughs> yeah, I don't need it yet. Is it hard Thank to get God. the supplements and stuff? Hey, I started asking those questions. <laughs> I started asking people, you know, how do you sign up? Because you you don't know. And it's weird. Some of my clients, I've had to deal with Medicare and Medicaid and help them with some stuff. And it's weird that you got to get involved with stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. My dad had to do it yeah. last year. Yeah. yeah. My parents. Sorry, Pops. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> and the owner of the company, of the she's going to be knocking on the door here soon. She's not going <laughs> to like that very much. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm married. Yep. Uh, my husband's name is Mark, and uh, we have a kid who's 27. You probably didn't even know that. I did know that. Did I know did that? know you had a kid. I yeah. didn't know how old. I didn't know how old. We adopted him. He was mm -hmm. uh, nine when we adopted him from That's Idaho. Awesome. Yeah, good kid. Uh, he will. We had some trials and tribulations. Yeah. I think everybody does as, as, oh, sure. as they grow up, especially in today's age. Um, and I found those that don't spank, you should spank. <laughs> uh, yeah, my husband got it will, covered. We're my, good. My husband will tell you that uh, we did not spank because, of course, as a, an adopted family, mm -hmm. we were, we couldn't do it. And um, I, there's times I wish I would have showed a little more discipline yeah. with, with Chris. I can't say yeah. that we spank our kids or anything like that, but a smack on the butt goes a long way. Yeah, for attention purposes. And that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. get the yeah, attention. Right. Yeah. Right? But uh, you know, hey, he's a great kid. We love him. He's out in Washington State. Very uh, cool. Yeah, he he's. He's got his own life now, so that's that's wonderful watching him grow into that. Because two years ago, he wasn't there yet. Yeah, and so uh, we were still trying to help him. And uh, so, so on this topic, a small town here. You've been here for a long time. What's kept you here? Uh, well, you know, so I came here because of Mark. Mm -hmm. um, we met. <laughs> so I, yeah, I was traveling. I was, you weren't prepared for this part. It's okay. Yeah. No, no, it's you're right. good. You're, you're good. You're I trying just, to say, well, I'm should I say of, this? How, what do I want to say? What do I want to read? So I'm pretty open about my life. I was, I was actually Mr. Gay Indiana at one time and I, I sung. That's what I did. Yeah. I, I sung. And so I traveled around to these different locations and sung and that's people paid me to go in and sing at their bars. I don't have that voice anymore, so I couldn't do that now. But 
back in the day, it was sort of fun to do. Well, I met Mark in Lima, Ohio, and then um, that brought us down to Sydney when we decided to create a relationship, and uh, I had to get out of the entertainment portion of my life and get into actually getting a real job and growing up, right. which sucked. Yeah. Um, I'll bet. Well, you enjoy yeah, performing. Yeah. And it's still a big part of your life, which we're going to touch on a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but then as I, I started, I think it was Stoli's. Yeah. Uh, I worked there for a while, and then I worked at Advanced Composites and Hexa and all these other places. And grew in, grew I remember when you were, because you were working at Hexa when you got in the real estate industry, if I recall correctly. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very good. So so speaking of that, so how long have you been in the real estate game, and what kind of what kind of pushed you into that? What What was the interest? So, yeah, six, about six years I've been in it. Mm -hmm. um, Mark and I had an antique store downtown Sydney. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times I'd have to go into people's homes to, because we were purchasing items or maybe bought their estate out, and we'd clean out the estate. And I just found some of the architecture that I was looking at, the, the homes and the way they were built, and, and honestly, the way people lived. I found it fascinating that people lived in different ways because I've always right. seen just the way we've lived. And uh, so I, I just thought it was fun. And then uh, when we lived up in um, Anna, we had a really nice home up there, and we decided to sell it, and Gay jumped in to help us sell it. And uh, in, in that process, she and I started discussing it. And I think she kind of guided me into it. Uh, she's a great mentor, and she said, hey, I think you'd do good. Uh, and well, you're she, a people person. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. It's, it's, <laughs> no, i got to tell you something funny. Yeah. Funny is Mar Mark says I'm not. It, I think you are. Because I don't. You're like very it. outgoing. I, this one-on-one -on -one stuff, hate it. Yeah, hate it. I can stand in front of a group of thirty people, a hundred people, and perform and do whatever. Yeah. But you put me one-on-one, -on -one and I hate it. And uh, I don't show a lot of emotion a lot of times. And so, Mark and a, a lot of people think that I'm in a bad mood. I'm not in a bad mood. I, I'm just me. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, but you know, give me a character, and I'm fine. I know when so, we're at closing, we're just we're always laughing and talking and, and yeah, well, there's five on. or six people right? there. You so love that. The attention's not just on me at this moment, so we're fine. Very good. So, um, you know, a lot of stuff's been going on in our industry lately, right? The last, uh, you know, 2022, the rate started to shift a little bit, and the the amount of inventory started going down. You know, what kind of obstacles have you been seeing uh, in the industry, and, and how are you kind of overcoming some of those? Well. If I think right now the lack of inventory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, the, I think that's the number one issue. Yeah, right. And inventory to me isn't just pe or isn't just the the homes either. It's the people. Right? A yeah. lot of people right now just don't. They're not looking at moving because of interest rates or mm -hmm. or whatever. But hey, interest rates have been a lot worse, guys. Yeah. Uh, sure. I, I remember. I think we were at thirteen on one of our first houses yeah. back in the eighties. And and you know what's funny is there's always always these like Facebook meme groups that that make fun of like boomers that talk about the eighties. And it's like, you know, yeah. back when I bought it, it was 19% and everybody replies, well, your house was only 40,000, but you know, it's somewhat relevant because of the income at the same Absolutely. time. Right now I will say in the last three or four years, income has not outpaced the inflationary levels of where housing has gone. Correct. That's true. That's correct. hundred percent true. So we feel your pain, buyers. Absolutely. So when you're mixing these high prices and you're mixing these higher rates, it is more challenging, right? right. People are stretching their dollar really, really thin to qualify for certain products. Um, so th this this is a, a question that kind of wasn't on here that we, we uh, spoke about before. But if you were approaching a seller and they're kind of like on the fence, I mean, what would be your pitch saying, hey, you know, let's get these houses on the market and, and why? I mean, there's, there's goods and bads. So. I don't like to make pitches to people. Sure. I don't want to persuade anyone to do one thing or the other. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody approaches me and says, I'm thinking about selling my house, of course, I want to sit down and talk about the pros and cons. Absolutely. Of, all of uh, it. You know, Yeah, Good. all of it. And, and we'll create the, the market analysis for them. And if they want, I even suggest that they, they talk to Gay or maybe another realtor. I don't care. I'm good with that. I want them to be comfortable in selling their property. Yeah. If I'm the one that's going to do it, that's fantastic. If I'm not, then somebody else can get involved and, and I'll bring the buyer. I'm, right. I'm good with that too. Right. You know, and, and you know, we have that conversation with buyers at the same time. Um, how much they can afford and what they're comfortable with is two different conversations. Absolutely. Right. And we always, we always encourage that. And when we're doing pre-approvals, we're like, well, Hey, you can go up to X. However, this is the payment at right. X. Are you comfortable with that? And a lot of times they're not right. They want to bring it back down to earth a little bit more. Um, and so we have that conversation and it, it kind of goes hand in hand with the, 
irrational fear that we have yeah. of disappointing someone or misleading or mis misadvising someone right. in a situation like oh it's going to be fine you know because we our anticipation r- rates are supposed to come down right and the expectation by the end of the year is back into that mid fives low fives range can i guarantee that's going to happen no yeah. no and we we have that conversation with buyers is like you know how i see it when people ask me should i buy now is it a good time is it's always a good time to purchase a home all right. Yes. You heard me say that. So it's always a good time to purchase a home. And the reason is, is because you may, if you find the house that's just right for your family, where you want to be, it's in the country, it's in town, wherever it is, you might not have another opportunity at it. Right. You don't know if you'll get it. So it's that, that whole concept of, you know, marry the house, right? Date the rent, divorce, you know, all that fun stuff that we always talk about. But don't pay over the appraisal price. Correct. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, that um, that can get people into uh, into some yeah. trouble. But but again, you know, uh, we like we expect rates really to come high, down, so you can refi. That's like marrying a really high maintenance person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like somebody you can't afford. Yeah. I feel like you have experience with that. I, I <laughs> no no, but our I, our first our actually our, not our first house, the house we owned up in Anna. Um, yeah, we our payment was crazy. Too much. Yeah. Couldn't and, handle it. Yeah. Well we could. I mean we did. It's just stressful. But we, we lived for the house. Right, yeah. And and we, that's all we did. That's a conversation, right? You, you you can love this house all you want, but if you can't afford a pizza on Friday yeah. night, then what's the point? Yeah, and that right? was, so it, we ended up finally and of course we live over by the high school now and we love the neighborhood. I love Sydney. Sydney's so mm-hmm. fun. And if you haven't been downtown Oh, it's is, amazing. You know, I watch these Facebook posts and I hate to I'm gonna get political on these guys. Stop posting crap on Sydney's Facebook the things. community. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you though. Sometimes I read it and I just grab some popcorn. Isn't like, it fun? This is what she's it's comments. hilarious. <laughs> some of it's comical. So uh, <laughs> I'm like Sydney. Oh, the the restaurants downtown are for rich people only. Oh, come on now. You know, I can. I love Casanos, but you can go to Casanos and buy a twenty dollar pizza, or you can go down to Emilio's and buy a twenty dollar pizza. Right. You know, but if you do it at Emilio's. Then you can walk over to the bridge and have a drink, and then you can go to Tavolo's and yeah. and sit and enjoy that. Yeah, atmosphere. Murphy's I mean, for beer. Yeah, you like Murphy's, it? And you, got, you got all stuff, all kinds of stuff going on. It's great, and, and go to the theater. Right. So we're going to talk to the, talk about that here in a second. That's a good thing. Last little piece on your real estate. So, so, so do you have any tips or tricks that you've been doing to to keep yourself busy and active? Mm-hmm. Any marketing strategies? Um, uh, any ways that you are staying in touch with past clients that were on the fence? I'm just curious. You know, uh, the best way to keep in touch with people, of course, is sending out texts, sending yep. out emails, phone calls, mm-hmm. um, a lot of advertising. Yeah. I, I, I do a lot, especially Facebook. I don't know if you've seen the Facebook things I do with my dog. And, and the videos. And my love videos. Uh, you know, and that's just something you got to do, and it just keeps your face out there. Uh, yeah. You know how many calls I've gotten from them is zero. But people know me from them. Branding. Yeah. It's all so, about branding. Yeah. I mean, that's why we're doing this show too. Yeah. Right? Not only are we putting spotlight on local business owners and real estate agents and everybody that's in real estate in general and we're educating borrowers, but it's so people can remember who I am. Right. Right? It's branding. Uh, so branding is a very, very important piece of, uh, of staying active and busy. So outside of the real estate market, you are heavily active in what we were talking about earlier, right? Performance yeah. in the arts. Mm-hmm. And you are uh, heavily involved in the success of the... Sydney Theater. I don't know if I'm heavily involved in the success. You're, you're heavily I'm, involved. I'm, I'm one of the people in it. Yeah. In general. Yeah. Right. Not saying you, just right. because of you, Sydney it's, Theater is back. It's but mostly because of me. It, it no, is. No, all right. We got to take some credit. Um. But what's that like? I mean, what's the what's that all about? Well, let me give you history. So, uh, gosh, almost 15 years ago, Jeff Wood owned the theater. He mm-hmm. bought he bought it. Uh, actually, Gay helped him buy the the building. <laughs> It, that's funny. Yeah, I don't know why, but her name. She's in every it, transaction yeah, yeah. in the last fifty Gay, years. <laughs> I, I plugged you a few times here, so no. Um, but Jeff Wood owned the building, mm-hmm. and uh, Gay contacted me, knowing that I was part of a group called Sock and Buskin, which is a mm-hmm. local theater. So she says, "Hey, uh, you want to get involved with this theater?" So I called Jeff. Jeff says, "Hey, come down, help me out, and I'll let you perform on the stage." And that's how that relationship started. And and then little by little, a new group was formed called Razor Roof for actually. It was, I think the original name was Project Mirror, and uh, it involved quite a few people in Sydney. And I won't name all their names because they probably get mad at me if I <laughs> named them all. But uh, they created a new group called Raise Roof for the Arts, and mm-hmm. and had raised a lot of the money to start the rehabilitation program. And now I'm on the board of Raise Roof for the Arts, mm-hmm. um, and I direct down at the theater. I've directed probably 30 shows down there. Uh, I've been in probably 40 shows down there. 
Um, it's the, this summer, it's amazing. In August and September, I think we got four or five shows happening uh, that are just theater stage shows. Right. You know, we do bands. We do um, guys. You can rent the theater out and have uh, events there. It's it's amazing what we could do. And Ian, and I can't say his name. I never say his name right. Hens, I think, is how you say it. Ian. We'll Hens. just say it. Ian. Ian. Ian only. Ian. He's known as Ian. Uh, he's phenomenal. He is our um, our executive director down there, and we've got a wonderful board. But he just he is so involved, and he cares so much about the city. Good. So it's it's and that's how you succeed. Whether it's a realtor, whether it's a mortgage, or whether you're executive uh, chairman of a of a theater, you've got to be able to care about what you're doing. Passionate. Yeah. You got to be passionate about what you're doing, right? Yeah. What's your why and all and all that. And it, and we're lucky enough, actually. Um, Kevin actually gave us a private tour not that long ago to, to oh, yeah, check I out did. the theater. I yeah. forgot. Yeah. And I hear uh, Cameron um, Eisenhart just stopped by mm-hmm. two weeks ago. Did was he? Fundraising. Was he on here? Yeah, he has, wasn't on here. Oh, okay. He was in my office asking for money. So we are now oh. a proud sponsor of the City Theater Group. I, I saw your name on the list, <laughs> the but year. I didn't know who was going to be yep. charged with talking to you. Yep, right, yep. So, so Cameron yanked the money out of my pocket, uh, forcefully. You should, and <laughs> you should give more. Yeah, well, well we're giving a good chunk, so right. we, we're okay, and we'll continue on that road. Um, but I heard they're doing some renovations down there and getting those bathrooms down the backside, yeah, and getting so, different acts in and stuff like that. Yeah, what people don't know is what we do backstage, and so um, just just on the stage and and above us on the stage, we've got two three million dollars worth of fly equipment and and curtains crazy? and lights, and then the, we have no bathrooms backstage, but we've got some pretty cool dressing rooms. So uh, we've we've actually got the funds now. We're gonna knock out an old wall that's that's not the greatest, and some old bathrooms that really never functioned. And we're putting in some brand new bathrooms. Uh, it's it's gonna be phenomenal. It's, it's gonna have a shower in it, so we can clean up some of us afterwards. Right. Because uh, some of these shows you get pretty messy and dirty, and not to mention we bring people from outside bands and, and yeah, stuff. They and they, yeah, they need a place to be. Right. They need yeah. they, they need a bathroom and, and get ready and all that. Yeah. So. I mean that's just another stage, but. You know, if you haven't volunteered for something, volunteer down at the theater. I know this is about real estate, but that's okay. I, I, my that, passion, that's what we're my, talking yeah, about. Yeah, my passion. I love real estate. My passion is theater. I can't get yeah. paid for it because I'm not that good. So <laughs> just uh, love doing it. I just like just, to be honest. I like people to look at me and laugh. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, get involved uh, down at the theater. They're they're looking for people all the time, and uh, I know you, you you sponsored. I sponsored. And we show first run movies now. Yeah. That's something people don't know. And you know, I was talking to Seth about that. He says, you know, we've been doing some first run movies. The issue is was the attendance. I yeah. said, I, I think it's more uh and I gave him my my feedback on it is just the inconsistency of such, right? And the reason yeah. I say inconsistency is because there's not a specific day of the week a movie sure. is actually playing. So now we're gonna rely on uh social media advertising, things right, like that right. to to create the crowd. And I think a lot of people miss it. And I'm hoping and that was my feedback. Hey, maybe Maybe you guys could get a day where it's like, hey, on Tuesdays and Thursdays we have yeah. first show movies. I don't know what that situation here's, is like. Not my again, like my uh, assistant my, says, not my circus, not my monkeys, right? So well, it's just feedback and hopes and that feedback, we get that crowd up. That feedback's great. Uh, unfortunately for movies, if you even go down to like Cinemark down in Piqua, mm-hmm. they're not filling up anymore like they I know. used to. It, I know that's the way movies are. Uh, when you when you get to us. Again, we didn't do movies for such a long time. People didn't realize it. And now that we're doing them, you're right. It's sporadic. And the reason it's sporadic is because we have so many other events that happen. Yeah, sure. And so you, it, the movies actually are fill-ins. Mm-hmm. So we use them. Okay, we got this date. We're not doing nothing. Okay, well, then this movie's coming in. Yeah, bring it in. Yeah. Unfortunately, you make almost no money on a movie. Yeah. It's um, all concessions. That's that's the yeah. only place where you can make money. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And so that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I hope you continue. Wish you continued success at the theater because cool. uh, it's made quite a comeback, and there's a lot of great stuff going on. Um, last thing, all right. Do you have a crazy real estate story? No, you don't. I don't believe you. No, he's I got have, one. It's okay a, if it's bad. No, we, we won't put it on the show. No, I have a confidentiality to all my <laughs> clients, and I will not break that confidentiality. Fair enough. And uh, yeah, so people, okay. Yeah, there's crazy people out there, guys. Um, <laughs> especially when you're showing homes. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's been times when you thought the home was vacant and it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And I'll leave it at that. But um, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> no name, no names, no specific no, events. Okay. Um, All right, we're not going to name yeah, drop that, or anything like that. That question, okay. that question kind of concerned me only because I, I truly do. Uh, w- when you're dealing with your clients, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of my clients will probably watch this because, oh. because they're my friends now. And uh, I don't want somebody to say, hey, that was my story. Why'd you tell that? <laughs> so I'm just not going to do that. 
<laughs> we can't do a John Doe, Jane Doe thing, right? <gasps> All no, because right. I think they'll pick it out. Yeah, the, <laughs> I mean, like, there's only so yeah. many stories, right? There's only a couple of real good ones. That sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. That just happened six months ago. Yeah. That happened to me. All right, very good. Well, Kevin, thank you again uh, cool. for taking the time today and coming on the show. Guys, that's going to be it for us this week. Uh, make sure to check it out on YouTube. Like it, click the link, share it with your friends, and subscribe. Remember, you can also find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and we will see you next week. Call Kevin Jones in case of <laughs> Bye. <laughs>